All right, late night talk show host Jimmy Kimmel and a spokesperson for Speaker Paul Ryan got into a bit of a Twitter fight over funding for the Children's Health Insurance Program, or CHIP. Kimmel tweeting this, shame on you for making CHIP a bargaining chip. Shame on you for tying our children's lives to immigration and shame on you at Speaker Ryan for doing anything other than funding CHIP cleanly and immediately. Prominent Democrats like Senator Dianne Feinstein claim people could die because of a shutdown. So are Republicans really that heartless? Let's talk to a couple of them. Congressman Steve Stivers and Congresswoman Mimi Walters, uh, the chair and vice chair of the National Republican Congressional Committee. Great to have you both in tonight. Great to be on. Yep. All right, so are you that heartless? <coughs> because that is the way that the media is going to play this. Well, no. And uh, we funded CHIP. Uh, we reauthorized CHIP in November. Uh, we sent it to the Senate. The Senate hadn't done anything with it. We passed it again in December, standalone. Senate hasn't done anything with that. So this time we added it to the continuing resolution because states like Ohio, where I live, are starting to run out of money. And in fact, this is a compassionate thing to do to add it to the funding bill. There's nothing in the funding bill that Democrats disagree with, Shannon. They're playing politics and putting politics ahead of paying our troops and reauthorizing the CHIP program. And uh, we just need to move on get a funding bill done and continue the negotiations. From what I hear, we are close to a deal on, on immigration. We need to allow those negotiations to continue, but fund government, as Dianne Feinstein said, people could die if government shuts down. People depend on government. Uh, military families are not gonna get paid. Reservists and National Guardsmen are gonna be sent home at midnight tonight. Uh, and also the families of soldiers who are deployed are not gonna have their pay and benefits. We have to fix this. Mm -hmm. Well, Congresswoman, were you hopeful that or optimistic that what you all sent over to the Senate was actually going to get to? But I mean, we're not even getting to the procedural hurdle to get to the vote on the merits. Um, were you hopeful that this might have gone differently? Oh, I was very hopeful. And um, I'm very disappointed that uh, Chuck Schumer and the Democrats have been obstructionists and that they have not uh, moved this bill forward. Uh, as Steve has said, um, it's critical that we make sure that we have funding for these kids in the CHIP program. These are the kids that need this health insurance, these low-income children. And the DACA issue is an issue that we are very close on, but it's a completely separate issue, and we have till March 5th until we can solve that problem. And so we need to get the government open, we need to keep it open, and we need to make sure that we handle uh, DACA at a later date. What do you all think at this point? I mean, there's talk of something in the five-day range, two or three-week range. Do you think that's where we go next? Uh, I think I'll vote for whatever they put in front of us. Um, and I'm hopeful that the senators keep talking and find a deal because shutting the government down is playing politics with the American people and uh, we shouldn't do it, and I don't want to do it, and I'm working, we're all going to continue to work to keep it open. Unfortunately, a lot of House Democrats are now on the record being against Children's Health Insurance Program and against funding the government. I'd like to give them another opportunity. I'll give them a do-over. I want to hold them accountable for the last votes, but I'd like to give them a do-over and like keep sending stuff to the Senate. So we'll see how it goes. Well, and I know that there's been a general frustration from on many different measures from the House that you all have passed a lot of things that go to the Senate and never actually get to a vote or an opportunity to go anywhere on the floor. This is something that impacts everyone, though. Okay, so you have five uh, Democrats who actually voted yes on this today. We've talked about how a lot of them are uh, in districts that um, they may be up for re-election. These are districts or states that uh, were positive for President Trump. Um, what do you make of those five votes? Because even you would need more than that, even if you corralled the Republicans who mm -hmm. voted no. Well, I think they made the right decision in voting for this, and they see the, the implications it could have in their own election if they didn't vote for this bill this evening. And so it's going to be interesting to see as we move forward um, how many other Democrats decide to come on board. Okay, so we are just under 12 minutes now as we get to that, uh, ticking down to that deadline at midnight where the funding essentially runs out. Um, in the meantime, we've talked about DACA, and you all say, or you believe that they're, it, we're, you're getting closer on the Hill. But looking at the measure, the primary measure in the House from uh, Chairman Goodlatte uh, and others who joined with him on that, and what we saw from the Durbin-Graham piece over in the Senate, they are wildly different when we're talking about chain migration, the visa lottery, path to citizenship or not path to citizenship. I mean, they're there seem to be huge gaps there. So how close do you think you really are? I think there is general agreement on the big principles of doing something for uh, the DACA recipients uh, and then doing something for border security. I mean, I, that's, it's really two things that have to be solved and they need to be solved together because they're two sides of the same coin, Shannon. 
All right, I want to play a little bit from one of your colleagues on the Hill, the other side of the aisle. Uh, this is uh, from one of the top Democrats, Steny Hoyer. Here's what he's saying. Democrats have consistently been ready and willing to sit down at the negotiating table and reach an agreement with our Republican colleagues. But we will not be blackmailed. We will not be blackmailed because Republicans are unwilling to compromise. Okay, so they say you're the ones who won't compromise. They say they're ready, they're sitting, they're waiting at the table. Where is the truth in this? Well, I just want to ask the Democrats back in 2008 when they had comp complete control, they had the presidency, they had the House, and they had and they had the Senate, they could have had immigration reform back then if they truly, truly wanted immigration reform. So for them to cast the stone that it's our fault is very disingenuous. Well, and we're hearing from... And another thing that I think should be brought up is um, Mr. Hoyer is saying that we are blackmailing the Democrats when they're the ones who voted to shut the government down. Uh, most Democrats voted to shut the government down. That sounds more like blackmail with the American people than giving them a deal to keep government going and telling them we will continue to negotiate with you, which is what our leadership has told them consistently and the talks had continued. Uh, so I'm hopeful that we can keep government open, open it back up and continue these talks that, because DACA doesn't uh, end until March. We've got six weeks to deal with that. We have 12 minutes to deal with yeah, we're now down to nine <laughs> nine minutes. Um, but you know, when we look at these these um, deadlines out there, March fifth, and we've had a federal judge who now says, uh, even if you get to that point, uh, essentially not banning the administration from being able to roll back DACA or, or undo the program. So that's been appealed now directly Correct. to the Ninth Circuit and the Supreme Court. So we'll see. A lot could happen before March fifth, right. but a lot of folks think a lot <laughs> won't happen, and that we will be at March first, and there will not be a solution, and we're going to have another fight. Well. I hope my hope is that we do have this solved. I think there's a willingness, certainly on the Republican side. Uh, I come from the state of California, and this is a very big issue, a big issue in my district. And I know there is a willingness on our side uh, to find a compromise and to get this issue resolved. Uh, remember, when this um, uh, DACA issue was put forward, it was an executive order mm -hmm. by President Obama, and it's Congress's job to make sure that we solve this issue. And so it is our responsibility, and my hope is that the Democrats will come to the table and help us resolve it. Okay, so it feels like to a lot of Americans watching what you all are saying and what we're hearing from Cindy Hoyer, that you're talking past each other because he's saying we are at the table and we do wanna have a conversation. So where is that getting lost? Well, they have been at the table and we've been at the table and those negotiations have actually been going okay. Mm -hmm. We are closer today than we were before. Uh, but we can't shut the government down. Um, that, that doesn't do anything to move those negotiations forward. They're unrelated topics. To try to tie them together is a problem. We need to fund the government. Our military families are depending on it. We need to reauthorize the CHIP program. We thought that made this a layup, but apparently they're willing to vote against that too. So we will come back to the table on this, I'm sure, tonight or tomorrow morning early and try to figure out what we can do to keep the government open or reopen it technically now. So we're gonna keep working at it. Okay, Senator uh, Heitkamp, uh, Democrat, obviously is one of the ones who crossed over and voted yes to get this measure at least to some kind of sub mm -hmm. substantive debate in the Senate. She also today uh, introduced a bill that would withhold the pay of members of Congress is there a, if there is a government shutdown. We know that's not possible right now. But she says if Congress can't do their jobs, they shouldn't get paid. What do you think? I agree. I mean, we shouldn't get paid if we can't do our job. Uh, and so I would support that. Would you say I've that? already signed a letter uh, asking that my pay be withheld until we have a budget resolution. It'll be turned in tomorrow, or I guess whenever the clerk is open. You have six minutes. Uh, yeah, so, <laughs> Seven minutes. Uh, but I just signed it. it before I left the office in anticipation of the worst happening. Uh, I did it before when we had the shutdown in 2013. Uh, I agree with that, but I also think it's about getting a deal not about not getting paid. So, but I, I'm withholding my own pay until we have a have a deal. Do you all have good friends who are colleagues across mm -hmm. the aisle, Democrats, who Absolutely. you trust that you can have conversations about these things that mm -hmm. give you hope that there is mm -hmm. some kind of common ground? Yes, yes, definitely. And um, that's why I'm hopeful that we are going to get to a solution ultimately because it's in uh, the best interest of our country.
to make sure that we do. And I know there are people on the other side of the aisle that want to solve this problem just as much as we do, but we have some major differences that we have to come to a compromise and figure out how to handle it. So how do those conversations go? Well, there, we're having conversations at a rank and file level. There are conversations at the leadership level. Uh, they need to happen at every level possible. I've talked to several Democrat members this evening and tried to figure out if there's something that can, you know, we can take the leadership to say we, we think we have something that can create a deal. Um, we continue to talk and hopefully we'll get something late this evening. All right, about five minutes to go on that deadline. Uh, in the meantime, fresh polling out today, that's not going to surprise either one of you, uh, that congressional approval now stands uh, at 18 percent. That's according to the latest CNN poll. Uh, and I'm, I'm sure that you all understand America's frustrations when we're watching situations like this, but how does it make you feel to, to know that that's where you're at, 18 percent? You know what's interesting is we see these polls, and I've been an elected official in various capacities for 20 years, and it always seems that we see these polls, and as a collective body, uh, we never poll very high, but when you go home and you go to your district and your constituents see you and they talk to you and, and, you, and they like you and, and, they're popular, and you're popular, so um, it's really interesting to break down these polls and to see where collectively we're not very popular, but when you go back home to your district, uh, you as an individual usually are. And that makes a lot of difference. So uh, let me um, touch back up what we uh, were talking about with the president earlier. Uh, Senate Minority Leader Chuck Schumer went over to the White House. Everybody thought, at least publicly, what they were saying is that it went well. The president tweeted that he thought they had a great meeting. Then um, we hear from Schumer's folks, uh, or you know, close to him, saying uh, the president went then and talked to, quote, his hard right, and things sort of uh, fall apart. Then the president tweets, things are not going well. Um, what do you make of their relationship? I mean, we know the president has um, had friction within his own party, but it's clearly there with the opposing party. At times they seem like they're doing well, they can work together, and at other times it seems like it turns on a dime. Well, I think the president showed leadership by inviting Senator Schumer to the White House and trying to find a deal, but there are legitimate differences, so, you know, I don't want to make light of those, but I think, uh, you know, the president is trying. I think Senator Schumer is trying. I think we just need to not talk past each other and try to find a deal, and I think we can get there. Uh, I am still optimistic by, you know, at my core, and I think we are going to find a deal. Uh, we have to for the American people. Do you think there's good faith on both sides? I do. I think um, both sides' heart is in it, and um, but we both philosophically feel differently about certain issues, and so um, it's, it's, and it's a very healthy, healthy debate for this country. Uh, when you are creating legislation, and we saw when the president had um, people to the White House a, a week or so ago talking about immigration, and the public was invited to be in, the press was in, and you got to see how um, how the the talks were going, and how do you uh, make legislation, and how do you compromise? I thought that was very healthy for the American public to see, mm -hmm. and that's pretty much what we're doing right now. I am confident we will get to a good solution. Um, but it's going to be a rocky road on the way. All right, with about two and a half minutes to go, uh, Congresswoman, Congressman, we thank you both for coming in. Uh, and we hope that those bipartisan and behind the scenes talks continue for the sake of the country. And as you pointed, uh, our military families, too, uh, the most important consideration for a lot of folks right now. Thank you.